Hello, hello. Um, I'm up at the Capitol today for a little bit and thought I'd take the time to give you some updates from what happened this week. It was the second week of our legislative session and um, just want to keep you posted. Sometimes during the week it's kind of hectic uh, as we're trying to get, <clears throat> make sure that we have all our bills read and we're ready for what's next. Um, I have to say sometimes it's hard for me to keep up on communicating well during the week. Um, we also had a real busy week of email and contacts from our constituents, so I want to make sure we're trying to be responsive to that. So I'll actually we'll be sending a bunch of emails back today to try to let people know what we learned um, about their questions. So I just wanted to start with just telling you a little bit about where we are in the in the session. So second week of session is very much still focused on committee work first. Our committees are very are the place where things get vetted the most. So those are the small groups. They focus on specific issue areas. The majority party chooses the pro tem. The pro tem chooses the floor leader. And that's who chooses where bills go and how they get assigned. Generally, like bills that are related to health go to the Health and Human Services. Gen generally, things related to taxes go to the Finance Committee. Um, so that's what we were doing this week. Have a big fiscal impact. Um, some of you may have seen a post I put out earlier this week that was about reductions in taxes that were passed through the committee. Just want to make sure, I know I had a couple of responses from people who were worried about that, you know, our state having enough money. And I just want you to know that I am constantly concerned about that. I'm always pushing for um, budgetary and tax policy that will be good for the long term. Um, we don't want to have any short term wins that that lead to crippling the state in the future when we need revenue. So we got to make sure that we're being responsible with the public's money and that we're not um, holding on to too much as well. So this week we saw proposals that led to just in one committee we voted through about $538 million in tax cuts or credits. Um, so clearly there's going to be a lot of winnowing down of these proposals before we get to the final budget. Unlike the um, federal budget, the state budget has to be balanced when it's passed. So when we put a budget together, it has to balance out on the income and the expense side one way or the other. Um, so all these things can't happen at once. We are looking at having close to a billion dollar surplus this year beyond what was estimated for this year. And we're looking at increased tax revenue next year. Those are opportunities for us as a state. Um, it's great that the federal package has really jump-started us and got us going again, um, but we need to make sure that we are continuing that um, through our policies and making sure that we're taking care of the needs that really help that long-term well-being and economic growth and, and health of our communities. Um, so we will be very thoughtful about that. I've had a lot of debate and discussion with people about the grocery tax. There is a proposal to remove the state's portion of the grocery tax. It would not remove the cities or any counties that have portions of, of sales tax on groceries. We're one of very few states that still have grocery tax. Um, it certainly is a hardship for many people, and it's a big percentage of some people's budgets. Um, so folks that earn less money, clearly sales tax is going to be a bigger burden for them. Um, so we're trying to make sure that uh, I did support that proposal, even though it would have a huge economic impact. I, course we'd want to see how the final numbers work out but if we're going to cut taxes I would hope that it would be on something that's going to truly affect low wage workers and not um, something that's geared towards our higher wage workers or folks who don't need the help as much. Um, the other big debate up at the Capitol this week was about vouchers and um, there is a very uh, big proposal for using public money to fund private education. Um, I've heard from a lot of folks on that. Um, that bill did pass through the Education Committee this week, just barely. My colleagues in the Democratic Caucus spent a lot of time questioning the bill, close to two hours, and they really didn't even cover all the issues. We expect to see it in appropriations next week or the week after, and then I hope to really dig into the financial questions. It would divert a lot of money out of the state budget um, with very little accountability. It would allow individual families to decide whether to use money for private school or homeschooling, and we would have very little input back to know if that money is being used effectively or if it's being used for its intended purpose. Um, one good thing, uh, more than one good thing, but a big part of why public schools are valuable to us as we're deciding as a public what we want uh, for our society is that we agree together what those big um, re responsibilities and rights are. 
Um, um, both of my children are on individualized education programs, so IEPs. Um, you give up those rights if you leave the public schools, um, and I, that would be a huge concern for me, making sure my kids get what they need and having those proper uh, rights and responsibilities on the part of the school. Um, we can talk about that a lot more. It's certainly an important issue, and I'm concerned. I feel like throughout the pandemic, our approach should be figuring out what kids need and making sure that we get those resources to our schools to make sure it's happening. Um, and I think we've, we, instead of diverting money out of the public good, I'm really concerned about the emphasis on, on funds leaving the state government instead of being invested in, in the way that students are helped the most. Um, and that ties me to uh, mental health. I just wanna mention again that um, the Mental Health Caucus uh, did launch, uh, our priorities are focused on youth suicide and behavioral health workforce. I mean, youth suicide, our schools are facing this all the time, and um, we are trying to make sure, we need to make sure they have the resources that they need. Oklahoma City Public Schools has made a specific partnership um, with multiple public and private entities to provide mental health services more, uh, I'd say, robustly for um, students in Oklahoma City Public Schools. And I think through COVID, I don't know that they've gotten to implement that partnership as much as they'd want to, but I think um, soon they will have it fully implemented and I think it's so good for kids for them to have earlier intervention. Um, the other thing I want to mention is I'm so proud and honored to get to carry uh, Senate Bill 103 which addresses a concern for folks who get incapacitated ballots and that's shorthand for individuals who have physical uh, limitations that don't allow them to vote on election day can get an absentee ballot now. That could be people who are homebound or it could be people who are immunocompromised or their caregivers, um, and it has specific rules. We have that as an option for absentee ballots, and then there's what's considered a standard ballot, which is no excuse ballot that has to be notarized. Um, right now, we don't allow people who get the ballot that's for physically incapacitated individuals to return that ballot by hand. Um, and so this bill, Senate Bill 103, passed through committee unanimously this week. I'm so pleased because it would make that more fair. Um, I had calls from people with disabilities and caregivers last uh, election where they hadn't been able to mail their ballot early enough and they wanted to hand deliver it to be sure it got received. Uh, for standard ballots, you could walk into your county election board during regular business hours and show your ID and turn in that ballot. And for the, the individuals with incapacity ballots, they couldn't do that. So this change would simply update that one thing about our absentee ballots to make it more fair. So. Hopefully we'll get a hearing about that on the floor next week, and I'd be really pleased um, to move that forward. Otherwise, if you hear about concerns, things you want to let me know, please, please, please email, call, come up to the Capitol. I also still have my constituent survey live, so if you live in Senate District 30, either now or in the map as it's going to be redrawn this November, shoot me your feedback. I've been getting, I actually have it right here, amazing surveys in the mail from people who do them by mail. It's so great to hear directly from folks and people feel strongly and I want to know um, what you're thinking about. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you have a great weekend. Take care.